a 25 gram, actually this is kilogram, a 25 kilogram iron block initially at 350 degrees Celsius is quenched in an insulated tank that contains 100 kilograms of water at 18 degrees Celsius. Assuming the water that vaporizes during the process condenses back in the tank, determine the total entropy change during this process. So let's start with the setup. So basically we have an insulated tank. So I'm just going to draw that. And because this tank is insulated, that means that Q is equal to zero. So we know that right away. And we know that we have water in the tank and we also have a block of iron. And then it gives us some imp initial information. So we know initially that the iron, so, well, so we know that the temperature of the water initially is 18 degrees Celsius. And we know that the mass of the water is 100 kilograms, which the mass of the water or the iron isn't going to change because they're, this is a, um, just a tank, so we're not adding or taking anything out. And it also gives us the initial temperature of the iron. So temperature of the iron is 350 degrees Celsius, and the mass of the iron is 25 kilograms. And then it wants us to calculate the total entropy. So I'm going to put that. So delta S total is equal to question mark. So it seems like when you're writing down information for these problems, it, it seems like a lot of times you want to jump straight into the calculations and not spend a lot of time on the problem setup. But the problem setup is probably the most important part of doing these problems. So I recommend writing down all of the information that you're given in the problem. Write down your assumptions. So we've basically written down the information that we were given in the problem at this point, um, and also what we're looking for, which is the ch total change in entropy. Now let's write down some assumptions. And the assumptions are really important because you want it to be clear what your what you're assuming about the problem, because what you're assuming about the problem changes the equations that you can use and how you so can solve the problem. So, it's so you might be thinking that you're using a certain assumption, but make sure to write it down. So probably the, the, one, the one of the main things we're going to assume about this problem is that water, the water and iron are both incompressible. So the water and iron are incompressible. And basically by doing that, we can use the, we can calculate the entropy using the TDS relationship that we looked at in a previous video for a solid and liquid that assumed like the assumption went into that equation, materials were incompressible. So if they're not incompressible, then you would need to use the form of the equation where you're still accounting for the change in volume. So assuming that they're incompressible simplifies this problem quite a bit. We're also going to assume constant specific heats. And we're assuming that, so there's really no change in kinetic energy. There's nothing flowing in or out. Um, the system isn't moving. So the change in kinetic energy is zero. Change in potential energy is zero. This, contain this um, tank probably isn't really tall. And we also know that it's well insulated. So we know that Q is zero. And the other thing is, um, so one thing that gave us, well, also there's no work. So the work, I'm just going to say no work. So it hasn't told us that there's a electrical heater or like anything in this tank. 
And I'm going to quickly write something up here too. So T2, so T2 of the water is equal to T2 of the iron. So basically what we're doing is we have hot iron. We're putting it in the water. The iron's going to cool off and that's going to heat up the water. And so heat's going to be transferred from the iron to the water. So, I would, and I just want to specify because it, it might seem weird that we just said there's no heat transfer. What we're assuming is, is that there's no heat transfer out of the tank. So Q is zero out of the tank. There's no heat transfer in or, or out of the tank. But there is heat transfer from the water to the iron. But since that's inside our system, that means that Q is zero. So Q is just referring to heat transfer into or out of the system. If the heat transfer occurs within the system, then um, Q is zero. All right, so there's no work. And then we're also assuming, like it tells us this in the problem, that the water that vaporizes during the process, so right here, the water that vaporizes during the process condenses back in the tank. So water that vaporizes condenses back into the tank. So now let's write down our equations. So first of all, we're looking for the total entropy. So I'm going to write down the equation for the total entropy. So S total is equal to, and this is the change in entropy of the system. So change in entropy of the system plus change in entropy of the surroundings. And so then I'm going to split this up a little bit because our system has the water and the iron. So we're going to have the change in entropy of the iron plus the change in entropy of the water plus the change in entropy of the surroundings. So the equation that we want to use for the change in entropy of the iron and water is this one. So the mass of the iron multiplied by the specific heat of the iron multiplied by the natural log of T2 over T1 of the iron. And we can use this, so this is calc this is from the TDS relationship. We're assuming that the iron is incompressible, and so that's why we can use this form of the equation. And then the same thing with the water. So we're assuming that the water is incompressible, which is a pretty good assumption for both of these. So this is the water plus, and then Q surroundings over the temperature of the surroundings. And this is this is for the change in entropy of the surroundings. Although we know that Q is zero, so this term is just equal to zero. All right, so it looks like we're almost set. We know the mass of the water and the iron. We can look up the specific heats, so we know those. We know T1 of the iron and water, so the only thing we're missing is T2. So we're going to get T2 from the, second, from the first law. So first law to calculate T2. So let's write that out. So Q minus W is equal to delta U plus delta PE plus delta KE across out our terms that are zero, so the change in potential and kinetic energies are zero, Q is zero, and there's no work. So now what I'm going to do, this looks a little weird, so delta U is equal to zero. We need to add up the internal energies of both the iron and the water. So really we have the, the change in internal energy of the, water, of the iron plus the change in internal energy of the water is equal to zero. And then we can calculate the internal energy of the iron and water. So the internal energy of the iron is the mass of the iron multiplied by the specific actually, heat capacity of the iron and then T2 minus T1 of the iron plus the mass of the water multiplied by the 
heat capacity of the water multiplied by the change in, or the change in temperature of the water. It looks like these are the equations that we need. Um, so we know the mass, can look up the heat capacities, and we know T1, and we're looking for T2, and we know that T2 is the same for both of these. So both the iron and the water have the same final temperature. So let's look up our data. The only data that we need is the heat capacities of the iron and the water. So the heat capacity of the iron is equal to, and I'm going to get this at room temperature just because that's the data that's available. So 0.45 kilojoules kilogram Kelvin. And then the heat capacity of the water is 4.18, and this is just at room temperature too, um, kilojoules kilogram Kelvin. So now it looks like we have everything to solve. So first we're going to solve the first law to get T2. And then we're just going to plug T2 into our equation for the total change in entropy and calculate that. To solve the first law, we have the zero. So basically, I'm just plugging things into this equation. And this should be this is equal to zero. So zero is equal to so 25 kilograms multiplied by 0 0.45. This is for the iron. Kilojoules, kilogram Kelvin, multiplied by T2, minus 350 degrees Celsius. And we could convert these temperatures to Kelvin, but delta T is the same for Kelvin and degrees Celsius. So really, since we're just taking the difference, we're going to get the same thing. Um, all right, so plus, and then this is for the water, so 100 kilograms, 4.18 kilojoules, kilogram Kelvin, multiplied by T2, minus 18 degrees Celsius. So then if we solve this, we get that T2 is equal to 26.7 degrees Celsius. And now we can put this into our equation to calculate the change in entropy. So I'm just going to calculate the change in entropy of the iron and then the change in entropy of the water and then add them together. So for the iron, this is 25 kilograms, 0 0.45 kilojoules kilogram Kelvin, natural log 26.7 plus 273. And since we're dividing these, we do need to convert these temperatures to Kelvin. So if you're just subtracting the temperatures, that's okay because delta T is the same, but when you're dividing them, it's not okay to, you have to convert them to Kelvin, otherwise you're not going to get the right answer. So 350 plus 273, this works out to minus 8.23 kilojoules per Kelvin. And then the change in entropy of the water is equal to 100 kilograms multiplied by 4.18 kilojoules kilogram Kelvin, natural log, 26.7 plus 273, divided by 18 plus 273. And this works out to 12.31 kilojoules per Kelvin. So then we can add these together to get the total change in entropy. So this is just equal to minus 8.23 kilojoules per Kelvin plus 12.31 kilojoules per Kelvin is equal to 4.08 kilojoules per Kelvin.